and welcome to Model Train Fun. My name is Bo Jensen and today we're going to look at uh, how to get started with Merklin uh, for kids uh, with this uh, beautiful uh, Batman uh, startup set. Um, so um, even though this is a fancy uh, Batman set, uh, the uh, startup series also comes with uh, freight trains, uh, freight train startup sets uh, and passenger trains uh, startup set. So what is the uh, Merklin startup? Well, basically, uh, Macklin comes in uh, three flavors. Uh, it's the uh, normal uh, Macklin that we all uh, know and love. Um, this one is basically for adults. So if you actually go and look at it, it says it's for adults or uh, uh, people above 15 years old. Uh, however, Macklin has two additional series. They have the... Um, they have the startup series here, which is basically uh, for kids from uh, six years and up. And um, the uh, cool thing about the uh, startup series is that it's actually compatible uh, with the normal uh, Macklin. So what you'll see in here is it's standard C-Track, for example. Uh, locomotives and so on can also drive on the normal Macklin and you can use the normal Macklin with this. However, it's a little more sturdy. So the controller is different. It's not locomotives with a lot of details. It's not uh, rolling stock all in all, passenger cars and so on, uh, with a lot of detail, but something that's a little more sturdy. Uh, there is actually also another series uh, from Macklin, and that's called My World. The My World is actually from uh, three years and, and up. And that one is actually very different uh, than the, the standard Macklin. It's still HO, uh, however, the uh, trains are actually battery operated and you have a different controller and the tracks themselves are actually plastic tracks. So that's something completely different. However, I'm very excited to uh, go ahead and, and look at this one here. So uh, let's uh, open it up and uh, see what's in the box. So here we have the uh, Merklin Batman uh, starter set uh, from the uh, startup series. Um, so this is uh, number 29828. Um, if we uh, look at the box, you can see there's lots of stuff inside, uh, such that we can make an uh, oval. There's a couple of figures, there's batteries, there's tracks, there's a controller, a controller that looks very different from normal, uh, power supply, and then of course there is a Batman train here. So why don't we try and open it up? And as you can see, unfortunately, there's a sticker on here. Let me see if I can, uh, and then we should be able to get it out. Cool. Let's see uh, what's inside the box. All right, here we have uh, the box, and let me just make sure that the... Uh, Cardboard is empty. Yes, it is. So uh, what do we have in here? Well, we got tracks over here. And we even got some turnouts in here. So it's one of the more advanced ones. Uh, we got a locomotive. So let me see if I can get that out. All right. So a nice uh, Batman locomotive. Cool. And then we got some cars here, one, two, three cars, one of them uh, with a container. We got uh, what they uh, call the base station here. And uh, already here, you can see uh, what type of control it is. There's a small light here, so it's actually infrared you use uh, to uh, control it with. We have a power supply here. Oh, let's see if I can get it out. Yeah. We get a have a power supply. It looks like uh, the same one that's with the uh, mobile station two. Then we got a controller down here. Let's see if we can get that out. Cool little controller. How do we get it out of here? Okay. All right. So a nice little controller, cool, and batteries go in it, and yes, there is actually uh, batteries with it. 
I don't want to come out though here. There's batteries with it. Awesome. Then we got something in here. I think it's two uh, figurines. And I believe these are metal figurines. They're definitely heavy. I got a Batman here. Awesome. And then I think the other one is the Joker. So truly something that's uh, ready for kids. Yes, the Joker here. And there should be a manual somewhere. We can lift this one here and we can find it. So there's a manual here. You can see this is for the Batman starter set 29828. Uh, the manual here is in German, English, French and Dutch. And I see there is an additional manual down here. Let's see if there's other languages in here. Yes, Spanish, Italian, Swedish and Danish. All right, let's just have a peek in the manual. Let's see, German, German. Cool. It talks uh, about how to assemble the track, what the track needs to look like, how to hook up the base station, how to uh, put batteries in the controller. All right. And then basically how to uh, use the controller. All right, let's uh, try setting it up. Now, before we get too excited and start uh, assembling the track, Let's just examine the track for a second. So first of all, this is the uh, base station here. You can see there's a piece of track on this one here. Uh, and this is also where you can see there is a, a plug for the power supply. So we need to place this uh, track somewhere not too far uh, from um, uh, a plug or a power supply. Um, in addition to that, if you look at the, um, the tracks here, you see these two tracks here that are kind of by itself on top of the turnout are actually different than the other tracks. So if you compare with these tracks here, um, so these are actually those on top of the turnout are supposed to be used with the turnout and these are supposed to be used in the oval. Now, how do I see the difference? Because if you look here, there's not much of the difference. Well, the thing you can do is you can place them on top of each other. And if you place them on top of each other, you can see I can't I can't really get them to fit too well, right? If I place these two here, that has to do with the turnout. If you place those uh, on top of each other, they actually fit uh, perfectly well on top of each other. I could take some of the others and you can see these uh, fit uh, very well on top of each other as well. You can, of course, also go down and uh, read the numbers here. You can see it says 130 there. I don't know how easy it is to see. Those are for the oval. And then if you have the other one here, you can see here where it says uh, 224, right? But you can basically feel what is different and then you can start counting. There's only two of these, right? So let me uh, take all of these uh, out. Um, you see there's a lot of curved ones here because we have to be able to make an entire oval. There is six pieces of track. Uh, to get uh, halfway around the oval. Then I got some straights here. All right, let's put those over here. I got uh, two turnouts as well. One in each direction so we can make a siding. And this, by the way, is where the uh, special uh, curves that fit with the turnout, you see they actually go here such that it actually goes straight and, and is used for the uh, siding here. Okay, so we put the uh, turnouts to the side as well. Then we got more straight here. Now here's another thing you have to uh, take care of. There is actually two different lengths, sorry, that was the camera, length of track. So see if I line them down here, you can see there's a short one and there's a long one. And again, you can look, there's numbers at the back. This one uh, would say uh, 188 somewhere. I think it says it there, you can see. And the other track here will say 172. So the shorter track is 172 and the longer is 188. You need to be aware of that when you're, we are gonna assemble everything. Now, how do we assemble tracks? So I got two here. You can see there's some uh, 
special uh, thing here at the end. Basically what you do is you basically just align them and it's easiest if they are on the table. Now I'm doing it uh, in the air, you see, and then you just press them together and then they fit perfectly. And you can see there's some mechanisms down here below that actually snaps everything into place. Now, how do I actually uh, disassemble them? Well, you do that by bending one of the tracks upwards, you see, and then it says click like that. Um, let me try it on the uh, table as well, because it is actually easier on the table. So I'll zoom in a little here. So you can see here, when they're on the table, you basically just take one and tilt up and then it uh, disassembles. And when you want to assemble it again, you push them close to each other like this. And then you basically just push them together, right? So it's a simple click, all right? And then when you want to put them together, they snap. Excellent. Before I start to assemble everything, I always uh, arrange it on the table so it's easy to figure out. So over here we got the longest straight, the short straight. Here we got all the ones that are needed uh, for the oval. We got the turnouts here. We got the two special um, curves that uh, match the turnout. And then we got the base station. Now what is it really we need to build? It's actually uh, this entire one. Uh, you see they actually suggest that the base station is uh, down here. Okay, and uh, then you see there's a turnout here and there's a 172, so that's the short ones. Um, and then you got over here the entire curve uh, with the uh, one three zeros. You can see when we zoom in. And then you see here's a kind of a mix with a long, a short, a long, a short, a uh, short, and a long. Uh, and down here we got short, long, short, short. So you have to be careful how you do all of this. So let's just start slowly. I will start with the, the curve that matches the uh, turnout and it goes in here. All right. And then we have the um, short one. It needs to go in here because then when you got the turnout here, you can see that it actually fits together and has the same length. If I accidentally took the long one, you would see it would actually be longer than the curve up here, right? So you see it's longer here. I can also put it below. You see it's longer and then it wouldn't fit. So that's a good sign if it fits or not. And don't forget since it's an oval, there's symmetry. So when there's a short one here, there'll be a short one uh, on the other side. So this is a long one. Oh, so I better take a short one. So there will be a short one on the other side of the uh, oval as well. And by the way, when you've got the turnout here, that actually has the same length as the long one here. You can see, well, let me just take that off so it's easier, oops, like this. And then you can see it has the same length here, right, as the long one. Okay, let's first take our turnout. And we got it like this. We need the other turnout and a short one. Like this. Then we need the base station. All right. Let's uh, make the oval.
to uh, put batteries in the controller as well. And if you look at it, there's a screw here, a small screw, a small Phillips screw. So we need to uh, unscrew this one. And in here we can add two double A batteries, I believe it is, or is this triple A? I think this is triple A batteries. Okay. And they even says Macklin on it. Cool. Then we need to uh, add these into the uh, controller. Okay. And we can put it together again. Now we're almost there. Now we just need to put on the locomotive and then uh, uh, power uh, the track. So uh, we got the locomotive here. So there's wheels underneath and there's a slider. Be careful with the slider. Um, when you put it on the track, you need to make sure that all the wheels are really on the track. It's not too difficult with these ones here. You can put it on. You see, I basically was lucky and put it on. And then I shake it a little here from side to side and I can feel that it's actually on the track. Now, the next thing I want to do is, is the uh, power supply. And by the way, notice here, it's very, very important. The last thing I'm doing is adding the power supply, right? There's a plug here and it goes into the round hole. So there's basically a round and a squared hole on, on these ones and it goes into the round hole. I'm just unwrapping the wire. I put that in here. I plug in the plug and then I turn on the power. So then we take the uh, control here and we push it forward and you can see it actually works. Yippee! Let's uh, have a look at the controller. So we got it here. It's basically a handle. There's some buttons, there's a stick up here, and then you have a lens here in the front. So what's very important is that this is infrared. So for this to work, the lens actually need to point towards the uh, con uh, base station. You see it needs to point towards this one here so it will work. And uh, if we uh, look at the buttons here, so here's a set of uh, function buttons and there's light. Uh, we got the stick here to uh, give more speed if you go forward, less speed if you go back. Then we got one uh, here that's uh, for changing direction. When you press that one, it will also stop. This one over here that's uh, stop is actually the emergency stop. So let's first uh, try out the light. So we can press this uh, button here and um, let me just do it like this. So that's the light button. What you'll notice is when I press it, see this one actually goes red, see? I press it, I press it, it goes red, and you can see the locomotive at the same time turns the light on and off. Now, if I wanna make the train move, I basically just push this forward, and you see it starts moving, I pull it backwards, and then it decreases speed. If I wanna change direction, I press this one here, okay? And then again, I move forward, and then it starts going backwards, and then I pull it back to decrease the speed. We try it again, we change the direction. I push forward just slightly, and then I pull back and then it stops. Um, you can also, so if I change direction, so now I'm going backwards, oh, backwards, I'm going out of the picture, okay? I'm stopping, I'm changing direction, and here it comes into the picture again. I press the button here, this one here, and that changes direction, and then it basically also stops. One interesting uh, button for the uh, controller is actually below here. And if you look below here, you see there's a slider here that can actually go from 1.2.3.4. So you can basically slide this one backwards and forward. So you see, now it's on four, now it's on one, and now it's on two. So that is actually the address of the locomotive. And if we go in and look in the manual, you can see here, one dot is uh, address 78, two dots address 72, three dots address 60, four dots 
address 24. So those are the only four addresses that the uh, controller can access. So you need to make sure your locomotive has that address. Now the one that comes here in the box, you see there it says at the top, see section eight, let's find section eight. So the one that comes here uh, in the box, you can see this is, uh, let me see if I can get my finger in here. This is the uh, DHG 500 Batman. And it says there, that one is 72. And I guess if we can read this pictogram, it actually says that's address two. So you need to make sure that the addressing button down here, now I got it upside down, is on two dots and that's what you can see it is. Now let's uh, add some uh, cars as well. So we got this uh, beautiful one here, which is the um, uh, Joker Batman car. Then we got uh, another container car here that uh, actually snaps easily together on these tabs. And then we got a small orange flat car. Let's uh, put them on the track. So basically uh, like with the locomotive, put them on the track and see they actually roll and then you can easily push them together. And then you got one train here. All right, now let's um, try and uh, take the locomotive and uh, connect it to the cars. So uh, you see the locomotive is over there. I'll go forward here or speed up. So it's coming around. I have made sure that the turnout here is switched. Okay. And now I break. And I think I just got lucky. I'm not entirely out of. So let me go a little forward. I break again. Now the turnout here, there's basically just a little switch here manual switch so you can uh, turn it and you can easily see uh, whether or not it's going straight or not. Now uh, I want to change direction so I hit this one once and then uh, when I push it forward now, so I'll do that over here, I push it forward. You see now it's going in reverse and it's going very very slow. I'll give it a little more speed and now it has the cars and if everything is uh, and you, then they will actually uh, uh, perfectly uh, connect together. So let me just take here again. We take here on the directional. I press that one once. I go forward and then we have the train running around. And uh, let's try the last function. So you see here, there's the uh, stop button. So this one changes direction and it automatically decreases the speed of the train first. This one here is the emergency shut off. So as soon as I press that one, it will actually immediately turn off power to the track. So I'm gonna hold my finger on the stop here and then uh, I'm gonna press it now. And you saw the train immediately stopped. Now, since it's uh, stopped here, what do I do in order to get it going again? Well, you basically just uh, press the handle, press a key or anything like that. If you just wanted to uh, brake more slowly, you can also use the directional button. So I'm gonna do that now. Oh, it actually broke very fast. Why is that? Because you can turn on or off whether or not it needs to accelerate fast or not. Okay, here now it's going. The only thing is when you use that, you see it changes direction. And then we go the other way and then we press the directional button and it should be going forward. So remember, by the way, this one is light. The only other function that works on this one locomotive is number four. If I press this one once and I press forward, well, let me see. Uh, oh, let me press it again. I press forward. This one actually changes whether or not it accelerates slow or fast. Okay, so it, it breaks pretty fast there. I press the button once. I'm gonna go here at a decent speed. Let me just let it get around to where I was before. 
You see now when I break, it takes a lot longer to uh, break. So that's basically a four that can turn that on or off. So uh, the uh, infrared receiver on the base uh, station also uh, functions to, uh, to show status. So you see here, you can actually see right now it's uh, green, uh, which means it's okay and everything is functioning. Now if I press the uh, light button, then uh, the controller will actually uh, send a signal to the base station and then uh, this green will actually shortly uh, bring red. So I'm going to press the light now and you can see that it turned red. I'm going to do it again, again and again. So every time it receives something, it will actually uh, blink red. In addition to that, if I short circuit the track, so I'm going to do that now. You see it turns red and now it's actually uh, not lit at all. So it's actually uh, meaning that it's not good and now it's blinking red. So that means you have a short circuit somewhere and you need to fix it. Whenever you get it fixed, you can just go on the controller and you can press a button. So here I turned the light on. You saw it blinked first red and then it turned green, meaning everything is okay. And you can also see now I'm going to accelerate. You see it actually turns red whenever something happens. Um, the uh, other thing that's uh, interesting is that uh, if you don't uh, touch the controller for a while, so basically the rule is if the uh, base station doesn't get any input for three minutes, then we'll also automatically turn off. So in this way, uh, you can have kids play with it, they can leave it, and then it will automatically turn itself off. And here you can see the uh, base station automatically uh, turned it off. Actually what it does is it completely powers off the track. And again, the only thing we need to do is to do something here on the controller. So I could push it forward. I could also just uh, hit the emergency stop again here. And you see now it's driving again. And then you got another three minutes, unless of course you use it. So uh, whenever you use it, then it will, um, it will or change speed or direction or something like that, then it will actually uh, restart the three minutes. Great way to uh, get your kids started uh, in the model train hobby. Um, the cool thing is that uh, it's actually uh, from six year olds and up. So that means that even uh, younger kids uh, can use this. Uh, the other good thing is that the Macklin startup series is actually pretty big. So um, it comes with a starter set like this, but it also comes with the uh, freight cars. So many of the normal freight cars that you would buy it uh, actually has a little Macklin startup logo on it uh, from the, for the startup set. There's also even uh, passenger cars as well. So these are the startup versions of the Intercity uh, passenger uh, cars as well. Um, in addition to that, the cool thing is it's compatible with everything else you got, tracks, uh, trains, and so on. So uh, you, you can actually basically uh, start with this and then you can grow into uh, the 
adult uh, version of the Macklin trains. Or you can just mix and match. You, you can basically use your startup locomotive on your rail layout, or you could take some of your more precious locomotives and give to your little sexy old and run that on the layout uh, as well. Now, uh, other interesting things is that you can um, also, uh, even uh, for the turnouts, um, let me see, where do I have it? For the turnout, you can also actually put uh, turnout mechanisms into those that are uh, specifically for the uh, startup. Um, so these are the uh, Macklin 74492. So you can put those in, so you could get two of those and add to there. And then you can actually, uh, there's a turnout control box, which is the 72752. I'm going to in a later video show how to uh, connect them. But if you want to try yourself, it's really easy. There is very few plugs that basically uh, just plug in. Um, in addition to that, the uh, controller here actually can, you can control more than one train at a time. Although uh, judging from the manual, it looked like it wasn't uh, too easy. Uh, there's also an addressing button here at the bottom that can be used to control other trains as well. So again, you can actually use this controller for other trains and locomotives. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope uh, you will uh, use this data set to uh, bring in uh, young uh, model railroaders into the hobby. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a, a like. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Use the little notification bell. And I hope to see you in a future video. Enjoy.